Okay, this video is you can't outrun a bad diet with regard to coronary artery disease. We're gonna talk about some famous uh, athlete runners who uh, had some problems with their atherosclerosis. Okay, the first guy is, this is Jim Fix. And Jim Fix was real famous back in the 1970s, early 1980s. This book right here, The Complete Book of Running by James Fix, and got these real nice looking muscular legs. It was on the cover of, uh, it was on the table in my uh, living room, um, and everybody was talking about it. My father started jogging at this time, and here's Jim Fix. He's a real bright guy. He was a member of Mensa, uh, but he had an attitude that is, because he was a runner, he could eat whatever he wanted, and he ate a junk food diet. And uh, so he died of a heart attack, myocardial inf infarction, while jogging when he was about 52 years of age. And that was a pretty famous event. Now this guy's name is Bob Harper. He was the trainer on the TV show, The Biggest Loser, and he's sort of a kind of a muscular guy, a little bit pudgy. Um, and then he had a myocardial infarction, and he would have died. He was 51 years of age, and he had to be defibrillated. It was a cold blue, <clears throat> but he recovered from that, and he's gotten skinnier and improved his health. And, you know, by the way, for young people, if you're thinking about getting a tattoo, I can understand when you're part of some group, you know, you're a unit and you're moving out and you're all doing it as a sign of solidarity. That's fine. But I'm just letting you know, this gets portrayed in the media and popular culture as if it's cool to get all these tattoos. I'll just give you my opinion. I'm an old school guy. I think it's stupid. Okay. Why would you want to inject yourself with this ink and wait till they look older and their skin's all wrinkly. It just looks stupid. Okay, and don't get me wrong, I've had people in my family had tattoos. One of my brothers got a tattoo, and he shows me his arm. He's like, thinks he's all smart. Do you know what this means? Do you know what this symbolizes? I said, yeah, I know what it says. It says you're a dumb fuck, and you might have hepatitis. Okay, it looks stupid. All right, so I'm just telling you that, because don't go for all these popular celebrities, because I think all these tattoos look kind of crazy and stupid. And if you want to imitate one of these crazy and stupid looking guys, go ahead. But it might be fine for some, you know, famous person to, to look like that. But you see in a regular life, you look like that. It doesn't reflect positively on you. And that's just my opinion. And, yeah, I'm old school and I'm proud of it. Okay. Okay, now here's Alberto Salazar. And he, he was a Boston Marathon champion, national champion runner, great runner. Um... He was originally born in Cuba, but then he was an American citizen. He won the United States College the NCAA Championships in, his, uh, in long distance running. So anyways, I show you this guy, an incredible runner. But despite all that, when he was 48 years of age, he had a myocardial infarction, and he essentially died. He had a cold blue, was defibrillated as well. So the point is you can't outrun a bad diet, even if you're one of these superstar runners or superstar you know, fitness athlete guys. If you plug up your coronaries, you still have a myocardial infarction. So here's a book by Caldwell Esselstyn. He had 198 patients in a row with no recurrent coronary artery events over four years. And, you know, I, I spent some time talking to Dr. Esselstyn. I went to his one-day course, and I talked to him quite a bit. And basically, he doesn't even put his patients on an exercise program. He says they only have so much willpower, and all they have to do is follow the diet. They don't have any coronary artery disease problems. So he doesn't want to overwhelm them. Uh, with things. So that's all it takes. It's just eating the diet. And, and I mentioned that because also there's some pretty famous cardiologists who say, oh, it's, you know, because of the bacteria in the plaque. I don't think so. Esselstyn didn't give his patients any antibiotics to treat the so-called bacteria. I think the bacteria in the blood are like saprophytes in the sense, saprophytes in the sense that they, you know, you, what do you grow bacteria on a blood agar plate? When they, and what is atherosclerosis? It's a blood clot. So when they see a blood clot on the side of the wall of the vessel, there are some bacteria dormant floating around in the blood. They'll latch onto that plaque and they'll eat it basically and they'll sort of come out of dormancy. Uh, so that's what it is. And there's other, there's other cardiologists, famous ones, including at Harvard, you know, including, I'm not even getting, well, I could even say their name. Uh, Libby and Ridker, and I don't agree with them. They're kind of promoting this idea that a major component of atherosclerosis is inflammation. But again, just the diet, you can resolve it. And then people say, well, there's elevated CRP, C-reactive protein in the blood, and that's an indicator of inflammation. Well, there's other theorists like Gregory Sloop, MD, who think it's just a myokine indicating depleted glycogen in the skeletal muscles because of postprandial insulin resistance with a high-fat diet. So the point is it's not that solid an indicator of inflammation as you think. Here's a guy by the name of uh, William C. Roberts, he's a real famous cardiac pathologist, and he brings up the point that in lab animals, you feed herbivores high-fat diet, they all get atherosclerosis, 100% of them. In humans, I have herbivore physiology, so big surprise, we get atherosclerosis with a high-fat diet. 
Gregory Sloop also shows that atherosclerosis is a blood clot. Both of these guys are pathologists. Why I like pathologists, and I'll tell you, pathologists write the best papers on atherosclerosis. It's because they look at it with a microscope. They're actually looking at it, and they'll tell you there's not much inflammation there. That's not the, the primary issue with atherosclerosis. It really looks like a blood clot that organizes. In a sense, by organized means it gradually has immune system cells infiltrate into it, and they partially reabsorb it, and then they also lay down fibrosis, collagen, scar tissue, if you will, which eventually becomes calcified. That's atherosclerosis. I can also tell you, I look at atherosclerosis all the time, from catheter arteriograms to magnetic resonance angiograms, and most uh, importantly, from CT angiograms, computer tomography angiograms, and it looks like a blood clot. Okay, you can't differentiate atherosclerosis from a blood clot. Okay, so that's relevant. That all makes sense, and that all correlates with atherothrombosis theory, which is best described by Gregory Sloop. Okay, both of them will tell you, you'll even see atherosclerotic plaques recanalize, as you will see in a blood clot. Um, you'll see that it has a laminated uh, pattern of uh, like a tree rings on a, on a tree stump of uh, the plaque being laid down, then reabsorbed, laid down, reabsorbed. So it all fits for atherothrombosis and the recanalization component as well as like a recanalized clot, recanalized thrombus. So anyways, that all fits. And the diet's able to resolve it. And not only is the diet able to resolve it in the work of Esselstyn, it's been shown in the work of Dr. Ornish, in the work of uh, William Kempner in the, in the Armstrong studies on monkeys by the correlative epidemiology. You don't get any atherosclerosis in, in populations that eat a low-fat diet. You don't get atherosclerosis um, in populations that avoid meat and oils. So anyways, that was the point of this talk. By the way, in Nathan Pritikin's book, I couldn't find it right at the moment. My books are all over the place. They're falling out of the shelves. I have so many books and they're stacked up in boxes, so I can't always find stuff fast. But I remember in my Nathan Pritikin book, he had a whole bunch of famous people who had been uh, runners and had mild cardiac infarctions, but they were eating a lousy diet. So exercise is wonderful for you. It's really good for you, but diet's more important. And some even say it's 10 times as important as exercise. And diet's more important than stress. We talked about that, the World War One, World War Two rationing data, whereby these stressed-out refugee populations had a lot of stress, but they had much less uh, coronary artery disease, mild cardiac infarction type death, and diabetes because... The diet, and they were had the meat and the oil stuff rationed away from them, was more important than the stress. Um, so anyways, that was kind of the point of this, that diet is the most important thing. And these other things, stress and exercise, they're all important, but not as important as diet for atherosclerosis and the coronary arteries.